Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is The Lady Designer, and we are back with another speed build video. And this time, it's for the giant otter in our city zoo. And I know I did say that I'm going to upload the penguin as a second video, but to be completely honest, it's just not finished yet, and I don't want to rush it. It's a project I am already super proud of, but it takes a little bit more time, so hopefully I am able to finish it for tomorrow or for Sunday. But yeah, for those that have seen the live streams, it is a super awesome project, but it is just taking a little bit more time than you may be used of me. But yeah, I'm just super excited to share that. But hey, we already have the Giant Otter Habitat, so why not upload that one for you guys right now? And I hope you guys will also really like this Otter Habitat because I really enjoyed building it. So the Giant Otter Habitat is in the area in front of the South America Dome. And the dome is a little bit lower than the rest of the zoo, so that is why there is different elevations in the terrain, which is actually quite useful because for the giant otter, we do need, of course, an underwater viewing gallery because I love the underwater viewing galleries. So yeah, I'm going to use that in our advantage. And uh, yeah, it feels quite natural and really working more with the terrain you already have in city zoo so i do really like that instead of like being everything just super plain and straight so that is really cool and we obviously need to make sure that the water section is deep enough so for those who have seen the tutorial i've made for the underwater viewings with the aquatic animals i actually recorded that one after i made the giant otter habitat so i'm not using that technique in these videos just yet but yeah, if you're struggling with the depth of your habitats, I highly recommend you to watch that short video just for some tips and tricks of how to build an underwater viewing gallery for these new aquatic animals. So yeah, we have a very nice underwater viewing gallery for our guest and a water section for our giant otter to swimming. And it also has this river bedding a little bit connected to the more deeper section of the habitat. And the otter is basically able to dive everywhere, but obviously we will have this feeder in the deepest section to make sure that the guests can really see the otters up close swimming because that looks just super amazing. I really do love the animations of the giant otter in the game. They're absolutely amazing. So yeah, we obviously have to make sure that the terrain isn't super steep on the edges. Now, I didn't do that for every section because there will be a lot of rocks and stuff later on. So I just wanted to make sure that at some point, it was just natural, steep, and not like getting those wonky animations of the animals when they go into the water. Because I did notice that if it's too steep, the giant otter does a little, I don't know, it's like almost vertical. It looks really odd. So really pay attention to how steep the terrain is when it goes into the water. Because else you get like the really wonky animations and it just ruins the beauty of the game in my opinion. So we have two different viewing galleries into the habitat so i wanted to make sure that the guests cannot see the giant otters from the main path you're seeing those are more like the gray stone path and the i don't know what they're called the tree birch path i think they're called those are the paths where the guests can stand and this whole habitat is basically completely hidden away from the guests so they would potentially see a path like oh wait where is this path going to or they would see on the map that there are the otters the only side that is more obvious that there is something going on is the underwater viewing section which is actually looking really pretty and really inviting but the other two galleries are more hidden away but i was even able to squeeze in an animal tox point i was really struggling with that because i have so much water in the habitat and well you know if there is water then the educator is not able to throw in food in the habitat so i had to really move it around a lot to find the perfect spot on one of these viewing galleries to make sure that we have a talking point for the educator to throw in food already you can obviously put it down everywhere but sometimes you will not able to let the educator throw in food in the habitat. So that's why I was really trying to find the right, perfect spot for it. But I didn't do any special decorations or anything for the educator talking point, if that is what you're looking for. I just put it down to have some extra education for our guests, but I didn't really create anything special for it. So I'm using a lot of the tropical and mossy rocks. And what is just really fantastic with the new rocks that you're getting with the aquatic pack 
is the recolorable option. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. You can just paint that rock in a more brown color and it just matches super well with the tropical and the mossy rock. So I really do love that. And I can only imagine that this works the same for every other rock set in the game. You can just recolor it and it just matches the color um, as much as possible and just make it look super natural. And I do really like that. But also these recolorable trunk and vines, they're absolutely amazing. I really do like the vibe of it. Again, in this particular situation, I really would like to see a little bit more woods, a little bit more branches, but that is me. I'm still missing out on the huge roots we had in Planet Coaster. They were absolutely amazing and you could do so many things with them. And I feel still that I have less freedom with these trunks and roots. I, uh, I do really like them, don't get me wrong. I really love them, but I'm still missing out on over a year already over those big roots that we had in Planet Coaster, which we also could recolor and you had like a normal version and they were absolutely fantastic. And uh, you can compare them a little bit with the roots you have with the South America pack, but those are like really small versions of it. And in Planet Coaster you had like those big ones and I just really like to play with those. Uh, but yeah, hopefully in the future we will still see some bigger roots that we can use also in Planet Zoo that will be super amazing. So for the underwater viewing gallery, I used a new wood green roof set that we got with the aquatic pack and uh, I actually wasn't quite sure how I like that. I think with a few more variations of them that they would be super amazing. Uh, but in my case, I in the end ended up with like using just some more rocks on the roof and also adding my own green shrubs and stuff to make it a little bit more interesting and a little bit more different than they look right now. I'm not really sure how I feel about this. I'm curious if Mike Sheets, for example, because he probably loved these things, if he will be using them in Koali Zoo and how he will be using them. Yeah, I'm just really interested in how, uh, how other people will be using these items if they are not adding anything on it. Because, I don't know, they felt still a little bit plain for some reason. It didn't really uh, give me the feeling I was hoping it would be. But in the end, I'm just really happy with the end result with like the rocks and stuff. So maybe that is just me that I just expected it to be looking super nice when you don't have anything on the roof but for me i i just really had to add a little bit more shrubs and a little bit more plants and rocks to it to make it look interesting and nice and obviously we're also going to use the new waterfalls in the game like the new waterfalls are absolutely amazing i really do like them and of course as i said like the new rock set from the game i think it looks absolutely fantastic in your habitats and it's so much easier to use than the in-game waterfall so I think it's a definitely a great addition to the game to have these fake waterfalls that you can really play around with and really create some awesome scenes in your habitats. I think they're absolutely amazing. And underneath those waterfalls there are shelter areas for the giant otter to have some rest. It's a very small area because I don't really think the giant otter really needs much more than that. Uh, so I didn't really decorate it at all actually. It's it right with the keeper entrance. So it's pretty hidden away for the guest, and it's just a very small area where they can chill and relax if they want to. So during this whole habitat build, I really did use a lot of the new rock set, especially like the smaller rock patches you can put on the floor, sink a little bit into the terrain. I think the details looks at, look absolutely amazing. And we also use the small little stairs that come along with the new rock set. And it's just so awesome to see the giant otter really using those small little stairs to go into the water. It's so much fun to play around with this. I really feel like with these new rock sets, you really go in way more detail than I did earlier, especially with the nature. I am so pleasantly surprised still and so happy with the new rock set that you really, as I said in a previous episode with the gray zoo it really feels game changing to me with those new rocks and it really opens so many new doors for me as a creative player i just really really love the new rock set i can't say anything else it just looks absolutely fantastic and as mentioned in the front of the underwater viewing gallery i really tried to create some kind of really beautiful area with also some giant otter statues uh, above and on the sides of the entrance and really create an inviting area other than the other two viewing galleries as i said they are more hidden away 
but the underwater viewing gallery entrance is definitely a very, very inviting area for our guests to uh, have a peek at the wonderful otters swimming behind a glass and getting a glimpse of how they move underwater. It's just amazing. What was also really nice, I think I also mentioned it during the grey seal habitat, is the longer walls or longer rocks you have with the new rock set of the aquatic pack. They work super well as the edges of your habitat and especially if you recolor them so it really blends in with the rest of your nature i think they're absolutely amazing i really do like how those edges now look they look way better than i feel all the natural borders you make you have made with the older rock sets i think it's definitely such an improvement to use these because in the end of the day if you look at zoos you barely see real rocks being edges from habitats and these rocks just feel the perfect fit for every zoo habitat and, and the edge of their habitat. I think they look absolutely amazing as the walls and the size of the habitat boundaries. I think they look so amazing. I'm just so happy with the rock sets. Is that insane? How many people of you feel the same way as I do? I don't know. I still feel like I really want to redo everything from my city zoo, which is now a natural habitat. I almost feel like starting just City Zoo 2.0, where we start with redoing all the habitats, which now have a natural habitat barrier with the older rocks in the game. I don't know, I would just... <laughs> I would definitely go for it and just redo and redesign all the habitats and make them look absolutely amazing with the new rocks in the game. I think that would be just so much fun. <laughs> And those rocks also do work really well underwater. So having the edges on the water instead of like the terrain. The terrain looks absolutely amazing too in the game. But for the more realistic zoo vibe, I feel like these rocks do way better than any terrain in that case. So I do really like that. And also using these rocks in a totally different color with the giant penguin aquatic dome habitat we're building. And it works just super well. Talking about that, it, it's an indoor habitat. So everything is going to be indoor and there's no glassy roof. Like normally you are used to me building domes with open glassy roofs with a lot of annoying shadows also, by the way. But now it's like completely closed off. So there are no windows, no glassy roofs. And we're going to play with so many in-game lights. I already tested it during the live stream and it looks absolutely fantastic when you're going to use the lights. So I'm just super excited to share it. But as I said, it takes so much more time. But having those uh, gray rocks I'm using and then in a white version as well, it looks just so amazing. I'm just so excited to share it with you guys. I'm really, really excited also to finish it off. So hopefully, as I said, I will upload it on Saturday or on Sunday earliest. And uh, yeah, you guys are hopefully going to love it as much as I do, because else it was a waste of my time. <laughs> but yeah, I am just a huge fan of the rocks. But I should not, I should stop with talking about rocks all the time. But I don't know, they're just, uh, they're just really the best thing for me out of this pack next to the animals. I really, really love them and I'm so excited for them being in the game. But okay, other than rocks, we also added trees and bushes and some flowers in the habitat. Now first I started off with more tropical trees but I soon realized like no it, it doesn't really match the vibe we have in City Zoo. So I changed the trees with the oak trees that we use a lot in this temperate biome. I think they fit just best and it really blends in the habitat best in the rest of the zoo so I do really like them. And they're just one of my favorite trees of the temperate biome at least. And they just work super well with like the beautiful branches hanging over the water, hanging over the fences of the habitat. I don't know, it just feels super natural to me. Like whenever I think of, of a city zoo in the Netherlands, for example, and you have paths, you have like those big branches going over the path and you really have to walk underneath it. Like I just really love that vibe and it's something I've been doing even in Planet Coaster is just something I found just absolutely beautiful. So yeah, I really do hope that you guys will enjoy the rest of the speed build video and the cinematic shots in the end. What I will do is I will do a tour of City Zoo once we have all the four animals in play. So not a tour of the whole zoo, but a tour of the four aquatic pack habitats in one video so you can see 
what I've did with the new pack and the new animals. So hopefully you guys will stay tuned for that. So in this video, only some cinematic shots in the end, but I really do hope you guys will still enjoy. Do let me know in the comment section down below, of course. Leave a like at the video if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. And if you want to support the channel a little extra, you may want to consider to become a FayFam member with the link down in the description or the join button on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for watching and I really hope to see you guys all in the next one. Bye guys!